Hello everyone. In the following series, I will be swapping in the 2AR FXC engine from a hybrid Camry into my 2000 MR2 Spider using the Frankenstein Motorwork Swap Kit. The engine, with some modifications, can make about 120 extra horsepower over its original 150, to a total of 270 horsepower at the crank. This is a really good and reliable amount for a 1000 kg car. This engine, in some ways, is a much better alternative to a K-series swap because it is much cheaper, extremely reliable, and delivers smoother power across the whole power band. This swap makes a great track car that can also be daily driven. The first thing I'm modifying is the transmission. This is relatively easy. I did it with no prior experience with transmissions. The MR2 Spider has the reverse gear all the way to the right with no lockout, but in the Cyan TC, this is where the transmission's from reverses all the way to the left with a lockout. This happens to be built into the shifter so that one would not confuse first gear and reverse. Because the MR2 Spider does not have this lockout, we have to replace the detent cam inside the transmission so that you can distinguish first and reverse gear in the swapped car. In the kit, a modified cam has this extra detent and detailed instructions for how to swap this cam are available on the website as a PDF document. The reason I am filming myself completing the swap is because I want to show what it is like for someone who has never replaced an engine and has little experience with cars to go through with it and document all my mistakes and struggles. These are the tools that you need to complete this modification. The first step is to remove the reverse shaft detent bolt. The bolt has a washer on it. Make sure it is put away so that it does not fall off later. I also like to mark where the bolts go on the transmission so that I have an easier time returning them later. Next are two detent bolts. Be careful of the location of the respective springs as they do have different strengths. There are three more bolts that need removing. These all have the same interchangeable parts.
Next is the E-clip. This was a bit difficult to remove. Make sure it doesn't fly off somewhere. Push in the shifting shaft all the way so that the transmission can be separated later. I did not push it far enough here, but I corrected it later. The 17 bolts all around are not too tight, and a few need an extension to reach them. These are the last bolts you need to remove. Now it's probably not a good idea to use your ratchet to pry the transmission apart, but there isn't much force keeping the cases together. The two spots I used to pry them apart are more clearly defined in the documentation. After that, you can set the top case to the side. There is a small oil guide piece that fell off mine that I will show how to put back later. The bearing on the end of the gears can be replaced, and it is recommended to do so while you have the transmission open. It's about $50 from Toyota. The magnet on the inside collects metal particles in the oil, so it's a good idea to clean that with a towel. Next, I remove the detent shaft. A small pull after twisting it is all it needs. It may need a bit of jiggling if it is not properly aligned, but it barely needs any force. To get to the cam, one of the parts has to be removed on one of the sides. There are two total pins that need to be hammered out. They were tough for me because I lost my hammer and had to use my pliers. Make sure that you mark the orientation of each part. After replacing the cam, slide it back into place and reinstall the pins. To clean the mating surfaces, I used a blade and some sandpaper. The important thing is that there are no old spots of RTV left, but it doesn't have to be shiny. To apply the new RTV, spread about a centimeter wide amount all around the bottom mating surface. Make sure that there is a complete perimeter of material and that it is behind the bolt holes. If it was in front of the holes, it is possible for oil to leak through them and out. Use your finger to lightly spread the material around the face of the surface, making sure not to leave too thin of a film behind. Try to work quickly as the sealer may dry a bit depending on which brand you use. After aligning the gears with the top case, mate the surfaces and install the reverse shaft bolt. This is important to do now as a slight misalignment may not allow it to bolt in after the gasket is dry. You can align the bolt hole with a screwdriver if you needed to. After that, all the steps are in reverse. The 17 bolts need to be tightened lightly at first. Depending on which brand you are using, you may need to wait up to an hour before fully tightening them. This is to ensure that the rubber-like gasket is properly spread out and has 100% contact with all surfaces. If tightened now, it may squish out and not form a proper seal. After that, pull the lever out and hammer in the e-clip. Then return the bolts with the appropriate springs and sphere into place. They each have their own torque value, and make sure to add a little bit of RTV on the threads to seal them.
After the wait time, tighten the bolts to 22 pound feet with a torque wrench. It is important to use one as too little tightening can cause a leak and too much may squish the gasket material and cause it to unstick from the surfaces. All that is left is to shift the transmission to make sure you did everything right. This install was not too bad in my opinion. It took me some time to do it, but if you are prepared with all the tools, it should take you less than a few hours. It was certainly easy to follow the instructions, but I still learned a lot from it. The engine parts themselves don't have this level of documentation, but are certainly easy to figure out, which I will try to show in detail in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.